Welcome back everyone. Um, this is uh, a series about programming in Python using Pygame. We're going to be focusing on classes today uh, and we're going to be making a game, uh, sort of a mobile-esque game similar to Flappy Bird um, called Flappy Bat. So in the GitHub repository we're going to have these graphics which is a five-frame animation for the bat itself and this one is a top and bottom obstacle combined into a single image and also a uh, open source font. All of these resources are available under a Creative Commons license. Uh, you can substitute in your own graphics if you want but you may need to make a few changes. Alright, so as I said the focus today is going to be um, learning how to use classes in Python. So uh, this is building on top of the previous uh, episode in the series and uh, the previous episode had a lot of like global variables and kind of uh, poorly designed uh, aspects and so I think by using classes we'll end up with something that's a lot more maintainable and readable uh, so let's get started so I'm going to split things into multiple files which is also going to make keep things organized nicely and make it easy to maintain uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the um, the main game class. I'm going to create a file called game.py and in fact let's just create all the files that we're going to need right now. So I'm going to create game.py, player.py, which is going to represent our bat, um, obstacle.py, which is going to represent the rocks for us to fly through, and we're also going to need a scoreboard.py, which is going to show how long we've lasted. It's kind of a survival game. And then finally, we're going to create one called Flappy Bird, which is going to be our entry point. Oops, Flappy Bat. I've never heard of this Flappy Bird game. I don't know what, what I was thinking there. OK, so first things first, uh, let me close these graphics. We're going to create this uh, in the game.py file. We're going to create this uh, main game class, which is going to represent all the kind of top level stuff. Just going to keep track of things like you know the score in the game, but it's going to have references to all the obstacles and the scoreboard and the player. All right, so we're going to be using Pygame. Should be installed if you've fo been following along in this series, but uh, it's a simple pip install. If you haven't installed it, just pip install Pygame at the command prompt. Um, and so I'm going to add some imports here eventually once we have something uh, of use. So let me actually go ahead and put them in now, even though there's nothing in these files, so that I don't forget later. Okay, so I'm basically importing all of these files. Now we're not going to import the Flappy Bat because the Flappy Bat's going to be the main entry point. It's actually going to use this class. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to create a class called Flappy Bat Game, and a class is basically just a way that we can put um, data and also functionality together. So we're going to have a bunch of methods and we're also going to have a bunch of constants and instance variables uh, related to the overall game. So at the very top I'm going to create a bunch of uh, static variables which are, I'm going to be using as constants uh, that have to do with the game. So first we'll create black, which is going to be a tuple that consists of three zeros and white. Not too surprisingly it's going to be 255 and we're also going to be used, so black's going to be the color of the background, white's going to be used for the text, and uh, yellow is going to be used when we have this special debug mode. So I'm going to set yellow to 255, 255, We're also going to have the display width. I'm going to set that up as 600 by 400. So display width is 600, the height is 400, uh, just because it's supposed to be a sort of mobile-esque game, and so keeping it uh, reasonably small. You can increase the size but then the graphics proportions will be a little different and you'll see that I have constants for that as well. Okay so um, every class should have a constructor. The purpose of the constructor is to initialize the various uh, instance variables that you may have. Uh, so we're going to create one. In Python the constructor is called underscore underscore init. All the built-in functions have double underscore around them uh, in Python. So I guess to make them not overlap with any names you might want to use. And all methods 
in Python, take one argument at least, self. And self is going to represent the actual instance for the current object. So if I ever say self dot something, I'm saying on the current object, this is the variable or this is the function that I want to call. So as usual, we're going to initialize pygame using pygame.init. And then we're going to create a window. I'm going to say uh, display equals. So instead of just saying display equals pygame dot display, um, this is something that we've done before. Um, I'm going to actually say self dot display, so it'll save it as an instance variable, so that any at any point in the future, even if after this init function has completed, um, I still have access to that variable. And I'm going to use this to draw all of my sprites. All right, so set mode takes the uh, a tuple containing the width and height, so that's just going to be um, floppy bat game dot display width, comma floppy bat game dot display height, and while we're at it, I'm also going to set the caption, which is the window title, basically. We're also going to have a debug mode that we're going to toggle using the D key uh, that's going to show or hide um, these yellow rectangles for our obstacles because in our obstacle graphic here you can see that the whole graphic is really quite large and certainly I want to be able to fly through this corridor even though technically it's just transparent pixels here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some actual collision rectangles which aren't going to match the shape exactly but they're going to be pretty close. Um, and so I'm going to create a rectangle that kind of matches these shapes and then using the debug mode I can just make sure that it's exactly in the correct spot. And so I'm, I'm including this because you may wish to use different obstacle graphics and uh, therefore position things a little differently. We are going to have like a little corner jutting out that's technically there is no uh, graphic there uh, but it will still uh, kill our bird and at the same point in time there might also be some graphic where there is no obstacle there uh, according to the collision rectangle. So uh, there are some slight uh, slight issues there and if you want to fix that by substituting in a different obstacle graphic uh, that's no problem but I'm putting in this uh, this debug mode so that it'll help you to to tweak things after you're done. So I'm just going to create a variable called debug I'm going to initially set that to true so it'll it'll show the yellow rectangles from the very beginning and we'll eventually turn that off as the default. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a player. Uh, in order to do that though, I'm going to need to create the player class. So let's finish this, this class um, to the extent possible and then we'll come back and we'll add a few little bits of code as we introduce new elements to the game. So I'm just going to put to do's in there for all the things that we need to fill in. So I'm going to say create the player. We're also going to need to create a scoreboard. <laughs> And we're also going to need to create some obstacles. Okay, so we'll just put that on hold for right now. Now, the player, the scoreboard, and the obstacles are all going to be sprites, which in Pygame basically is a little image that you can move around. The sprite has kind of two main components. It has the image itself that it's going to display and the rectangle that represents its boundaries. Uh, we're going to do that for all three of these objects. And so they're all really sprites. So Pygame has a nice feature called the sprite group, which allows us to treat all of those sprites as a single entity some of the time. Uh, so I'm going to actually create a sprite group and add all of these things to it. So we can create the sprite group right now, even though I don't have anything to add to it just yet. I'm going to call it all sprites list. No, despite the name, it's not actually a list. It's going to be a sprite group. Uh, but the advantage of this is I can actually say all sprites list dot draw and it'll draw all of the sprites in, in the order that we added them to the group and similarly I can update them all at the same time. So it makes the, the game loop that we're going to be developing momentarily a lot simpler. Okay, so we're of course going to need to add um, the sprites to the sprite group. But we don't have any yet can't just do that. Finally, what we're going to do is create, I should probably put some more comments in here. If 
finally what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a clock. And remember that the clock it keeps track of the uh, the frames per second. Uh, so it's basically going to wait a certain amount of time before we get, get ready for the next frame of the game. Okay, so I'm going to put that in an instance variable as well. Um, so that's it for our initializer. We're going to come back and fill in these to-dos eventually. We're also going to, uh, unlike the last game, we're going to have the ability to start the game over. Um, so we're going to have kind of a score, uh, keep uh, keeping track of the score thing, which really is going to be the time that we stay alive, and uh, also the automatic uh, restart of the game every time. So in order to facilitate that, I'm going to create a function called reset. Okay, and uh, as all methods take self, we have to make sure that it adds self. And basically what we're going to do for reset, right now we don't have anything that we can have it do uh, because we're basically going to reset the obstacles and reset the player. Um, so for right now what I'm going to do is just put some reminders in there. But you can't have a function with no actual code in it, so I have to put the word pass in there as a placeholder until we come back and write that code. Next, we're going to create a play function, which is going to be one game. So this is going to allow us to play one game. And of course, the game is going to repeat, um, so we'll call this function over and over in our floppybat.py function uh, class. Uh, and so we're going to create a couple of variables inside this function. So I'm going to create a game over function, a game over uh, variable. The game over variable is going to be false until the user dies. So the, this can happen in two ways. The bat can fall off the screen or they can crash into an obstacle. Um, but I don't want to consider game over to be they close the window because in this case them dying just means that they get to start the game again. Um, but them closing the window means they actually want to quit. So I'm going to split that up into two different variables this time. So I'm going to create a variable called user quit. That's going to be set to false, and it'll simply be set to true when the user clicks it. One more thing I'm going to be keeping track of is how long this particular game has been going on in seconds, and we're going to be displaying that on the screen. That'll be kind of like our score. So I'm going to create something called time passed, and I'm going to initialize that to zero. Okay, so this play is going to have a game loop. And just like any game loop, it's going to accept user input, it's going to update the game objects, and it's going to draw the, the game objects in their new state. So the loop is going to have well, not game over and not user quit. So both of these have to be false in order for the game loop to continue. I want the while loop to exit whether the user clicks the, the X or whether they die. Okay, so then this function will end and uh, we'll call play again in another loop somewhere else. Okay, so the first step is to handle the user events. That's the user clicking the X button or the user hitting various keys. Uh, we're also going to update the game objects. And we're also going to draw the game objects. Finally, we're just going to you know, draw the current frame and uh, wait the certain amount of time using the clock. So first for handling the user events, we're going to use the event loop that Pygame allows. So we're going to say event in Pygame dot event dot get. So this is going to loop over all the events that have happened since the last frame began, since this frame began. And there's two types of events that we're looking for. Uh, first is if the type is pygame.quit, which is when you close the window, then I'm just going to set user quit to true, which of course will exit out of the loop. The other type of event is going to be pygame.keydown. And in this event, we're going to have two keys that we're going to handle the spacebar, which is going to make our bird flap its wings and then the D key, which is going to toggle on or off the, uh, the debug mode. So 
we're going to say if event.key is equal to pygame.k underscore space. In that case, we're going to make the, the, uh, the bird flap. For now, I don't have that implementation, so I'll just put pass in there and we'll fin fill this in later. The other key that we're looking for is the D key. And if the D key is pressed, we're just going to set self.debug equal to not self.debug. If you're not familiar with this, this is basically going to say if self.debug is equal to true, which is what we set it to originally then not true is going to be false, so it's going to set it to false. And if it's already false, not false is true, so it's going to set it to true. So this will basically toggle back and forth between true and false, which is exactly what I want. OK, so now on to the game objects. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is determine how much time has passed since the last frame. Um, so we'll call this uh, delta t, let's say. I'll call it delta time, actually. And so we'll say self.clock. Get time. It's a function that allows us to determine how much time has passed since the last frame. And then we're going to update the player. So I'm going to have to wait until I have an actual player to do that. But I need to tell the player how much time has passed because the, uh, the bat, the player, is going to be affected by gravity. And so we're going to be using some, uh, you know, some basic physics in order to calculate the, the, bird's, the, uh, the bat's velocity. So <clears throat> We're going to need the delta time for that purpose. OK. We're also going to need to update the obstacles. And those are going to slide across the screen. So that's going to require an update. We'll create a function in the obstacle class for that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to check if the player has died. They fell off the screen. So uh, let's actually put to do's here. And similarly, check if the player has collided with an obstacle. Okay, so we'll come back to that once we have the uh, player and the obstacle class finished. All right, so now we need to draw the object. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to clear the screen. That's so something we can actually do now. And so we're going to say self.display.fill. And of course, we're going to use our constant that we set up. Black is a good background in this case because it's supposed to be kind of a dark cave. Then what we're going to do is we're going to um, draw all of the sprites. And we can do this instead of. Uh, individually drawing all the sprites, we can actually say self.all sprites list dot draw self dot display. So it's going to go through the sprites list and draw them all. It's important that the order we added them to the sprite group is going to impact uh, you know which how the layering is going to work for these. So that's a pretty important part. Eventually, uh, so this will draw the obstacles, the scoreboard, and the player. Eventually, we're going to draw, want to draw the uh, the debug rectangles that I was talking about, which basically are a yellow rectangle that'll show us where we're going to collide, because uh, the graphics aren't a perfect representation of the obstacle. Um, so we're going to have to draw that as well. So. So now, to go to the next frame, what we're going to do is we're going to do self.clock.tick. Uh, let's run this at 30 frames per second. You can change this, of course. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to be keeping track of how much time has passed in the game, because that's effectively our score. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a variable called time passed. Um, I've already created it up at the top. It's set to zero. And so this, I'm just going to add the, uh, the uh, delta time variable that we created earlier. But in this case, this is going to be in milliseconds. And I don't want to measure the amount of time that the, that has passed in milliseconds. I want to measure it in seconds, because this is the user going to be seeing this. 
So I'm going to divide that by 1,000 so I get a seconds value. OK, um, then for now, let's just display the time passed in the, the title of the window. We'll eventually show it using the scoreboard. Let's just call set caption again. And uh, what I'll use is an F string here. Uh, of course, I'm going to say flappy bat. But then over here, we're going to say some number of seconds. So something like whatever. So in, uh, in an F string, if you remember, you can use curly brackets and you can use a variable in there. So I can do something like time passed. And let's just quickly take a quick peek to see um, what that's going to look like. Uh, so I'll have to uh, finish this code right here. So hold on one second. So over in Flappy Bat, we're going to have to create an instance of this class and call our play function. So I'm just going to say import pygame and import our game class. And then we'll create a Flappy Bat game instance. Notice when you reference something in another file, you need this prefix here. Now it actually is possible for me to do something like from game import flappy bat game. And then I guess we wouldn't need that. So that would be okay as well. Uh, oh, whatever, I'll leave it in here as a way for you to see how to do it. So we're going to create an instance of the flappy bat game, which we'll call the constructor. So it'll initialize everything, including pi game. And then we're going to have a loop that's going to rep repeatedly play the game. We're going to say while flappy bat game play and we're gonna have uh, right now it doesn't but we're gonna have play return true or false whether they want to play again and uh, all I'm going to do is um, is call uh, flappy back game dot reset that was that function that we created right now it doesn't do anything but uh, it uh, eventually will reset the player's position reset the player's velocity and reset all of the obstacle positions so that the game starts in the same state that it did originally and of course, at the end, we're going to quit both Pygame and also Python. All right, so there we go. We can actually run uh, this one. Yeah, it should just be a black screen. But anyway, you can see that we get this output here, which is in seconds, and that's fine. Uh, it just doesn't look particularly great, if you ask me. Um, but anyway. So what we'll do, probably, is um, back in our uh, game class here, uh, we're going to format this output. So let's say I just want to display two, uh, two decimal places. Um, I can do that. So for example, if we just do um, colon 0.2f, then that'll say two decimal places for a floating point value. So now let's see what this looks like. Okay, so now it looks a little bit better up there. Okay, let's close this other window. Okay, um, so, so far so good. Uh, we're gonna have to create some of these uh, other parts. Let's make the player first, because then we'll actually be able to see something on the screen. So I'm going to go into here, player. First we'll create the class, and then we'll go back to the game class and start um, adding in some of the player functionality. So we're going to be loading graphics. So just like last time, we're going to import OS and sys because those are going to allow us to get the path and create a new path um, for our file name. Of course, we're going to import pygame. So I'm going to create a new player. Now, player is not going to be a standalone class. It's going to inherit from the built-in sprite class in pygame. So we're going to say pygame sprite sprite. And this is actually really convenient because the sprite class provides a lot of behavior for us, like such as how to draw the image, and uh, it provides a nice framework anyway. A lot of uh, game elements work really well as sprites, and player is a pretty good example. Our player is going to be an animation, so we're going to actually load five separate frames uh, for that animation, and then we're going to flip between them every frame. Okay, so I'm going to create a bunch of constants that are specific to the player. Hopefully, you can see that there are fewer constants now, and uh, you know they're kind of more localized. They they make sense where they are. So I'm going to put some ones that make sense for the player. So we're going to have uh, player x offset. This is going to be a constant because the 
the, the bat is always going to be in a certain position left to right. It's going to move up and down. And we're also going to have a player jump speed, which I might need to tweak uh, just to make sure that it looks good. Now remember that uh, positive is down in the Pi game axis, so I want to go up when I jump, so I'm going to set the speed to be negative. And these images are a little bit too big, so I'm going to scale them down. If we take a look here, you can see that they're actually quite big. Um, and so they're, they're actually a little bit too big for the obstacle graphic, as you can see. It almost barely would fit in there. So we're actually going to shrink it down uh, by a quarter. There's also going to be a uh, gravity force, which is going to act when we are not flapping. That's going to pull us down. Now, normally I would set this gravity force to negative 9.81 meters per second squared, but in this case, I really don't want to do that because we're not measuring things in meters. We're measuring things in pixels right now. A lot of games will typically have a difference between real world coordinates and pixel coordinates, uh, but for simplicity, this game is just treating pixels as our unit. So I have to set the gravity really, really low uh, to account for the fact that I'm moving lots of pixels. Imagine like it's a really, really small unit. Okay, um, we'll add some comments in here, I guess. I like to do that for every one of my classes. So as normal, we're going to need a constructor. And the player is going to actually have passed into it the game class, uh, the game instance, which is an instance of this class. And that's so that we can access things that are on that game. So I'm going to pass those in. Um, this has a parent class, so I need to make sure that not only do I initialize the player, but I also initialize the parent class of player. So in order to do that, we use the super function, which gives us uh, our parent class instance, and then we just call underscore underscore init on it. Okay, so we'll do that for the other sprites as well. And this should generally be the very first thing that you do in your constructor. All right, so we'll store the game in case we need it for later. Uh, we'll have another property called um, dead, which is going to be whether or not we've died. And so we'll initially set that to false. Then what we're going to do is we're going to load the animation frames. So I'm going to create three variables for that. I'm going to say self.frames is going to be equal to, and we're going to load the frames into a list. I think to keep things easy, we'll put this into a separate function. So I'll just say self.underscore load frames. If you haven't seen this before, putting an underscore in front of your, your method name means that that function is now a private function, so we can only access it inside this class. Okay, so we have to define this function. I'll do that right after the constructor. And then we're also going to have a, so this is going to be a list of images that's going to be used for our frame. We're also going to have another one that's frame num, which is which of those images are we currently showing? And we're going to cycle this through the proper indices. Uh, but every single sprite needs to have an image at all times. So let's actually initialize this uh, image variable. We're going to set it to self.frames at self.frame num, which is going to be the very first image that we load. Frame num is set to zero. But we'll, we'll actually change this in our update function so that the, the bird keeps flapping. Okay, and uh, the other thing that we need to do is to keep track of the rectangle. And so uh, we're gonna have to define the, the rectangle for the sprite. That's another thing that you have to do when you're creating a sprite, is define the rectangle. It's pretty easy to do. You can just say self.rect equals self.image.getrect, whoops. Because that'll give us an, a rectangle. But it will set the x and y coordinate of the rectangle to be zero which we don't want. Uh, we want to position it. So the rectangle is going to be the x and y coordinate of the top left corner of the image and the width and the height of the image. So depending on the width and the height of the image that we load, uh, which as our, if you remember we're going to be scaling this down, 
uh, it's going to set the width and height properly. So that's why I did this. But I'm going to overwrite the x and the y values. I'm going to say self.rec.x. And I'm going to set that to our constant, which is our player x offset. Oops, and I forgot. I got to prefix that. Okay. Now the y actually is, is going to be just the middle of the screen. So we're going to say self.rec.y is going to be equal to, and this is why I passed in the game. I want to access the game. So I'm going to say height divided by 2. And again, I want to use integer division to make sure that I end up with an integer. Finally, I'm also going to have for the player a velocity. I only really need a velocity in the y direction. Let's initialize that to zero so that it creates the variable. Obviously, we'll have the, the velocity set to zero initially so that we're just hovering there. But gravity will eventually make it so that the, uh, the player falls. OK, so let's implement our load frames function. So I'm to make sure the name matches with the underscore at the beginning. And this is just going to load five frames. Each one of these frames is going to be loaded in the same way. Um, so we'll just put that in a function as well. Um, and including loading the graphic, we're also going to resize. So it makes sense to put that in a function. So I'm just basically going to return a list. And in that list, I'm just going to call self dot underscore load frame singular. And this load frame is going to take a, uh, a file name. So we're going to do something like assets bat dash one. PNG. I'll we'll just duplicate this five times. So the bulk of this work is going to happen in the load frame function. So let's work on that one. Now this is going to take a file name. This is a little bit strange because you notice down here we said load frame. We only passed one argument to it. Uh, but for calling methods, we actually say self dot. So the self is actually over here. This is the value that's going to be passed to self. Okay, and then uh, this is going to be the value for file name. So that's one of the quirks about Python. Um, it's, it it kind of makes sense. Um, it's just that it's an explicit argument. In a lot of other programming languages, you just have something like this. It's called this, and you can just refer to it, but it's just sort of this invisible magical uh, variable. Uh, Python makes it explicit and says, well, let's just make self the very first argument to every method. OK, so to load this frame, first we're going to just load in the image. So we're going to do pygame.image.load. And I have to actually construct the path. So we're going to do os.path.join, which if you remember is kind of an OS specific thing, so it'll choose the correct slash to use. Um, and it's going to join two parts together. So the first part is going to be the path to the current file, which is the player.py file that we're dealing with. So we're going to do sys.path0 for that. And then the second part is going to be our file name, our argument. All right, next I need to resize the image. I'm going to use the size of the image twice. So I'm just going to call image.getSize in order to get that. Uh, and you'll see uh, why. Uh, so the width of the image is going to be um, image size, which is the existing width of the image. But I want to multiply that times the player scale. Oops. And I'm going to do the same thing for the height. Height is the second element in the tuple that was returned by the get size. So I'm also going to multiply that by player scale so that we keep the same aspect ratio. And finally, I'm going to return pygame.transform.scale, which is, of course, a scaling image scaling uh, function. Pass the original image to it and a tuple containing the width and the height destination with the height that we want. There we go. So now this actually loads the frames properly. All right, so we're going to need some other things. So for example, 
uh, if you remember, uh, in the reset function for the game, I want it to be able to reset the player, and that's going to involve putting the player back into the middle of the screen, because they may have fallen off the screen, um, and also setting their velocity back to zero so that they're not traveling at a great velocity as a result of a previous fall. So I'm going to create a reset function to do that. And all we're going to do is we are going to set the Y position to be the middle of the screen again. We're going to set the velocity to zero. And we're also going to reset dead to false just in case we died. The last thing that happened before we reset was that we died. OK, so that's pretty useful. Then some functionality about the player itself. So we're going to say, uh, let's create a function called is dead, which is going to return our uh, our dead uh, parameter. I'd, I'd like to do it through a function. Kind of makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, and so I'm just going to have this function to read the value. And I don't want uh, other classes to be modifying my internal properties. I'm also going to create a function called flap, uh, which is going to happen when the user presses the spacebar. And all I'm going to do for that is set the velocity equal to player dot player jump speed, which is the constant that we defined earlier. So that one's pretty easy. Now the only thing I need is a function to update the player, which is going to do like the physics calculations and also adjust the graphics so it displays the next frame of the animation. I'm going to define a function called update to do exactly that. Now, because we're doing physics calculations, we're going to need the amount of time that has passed. And so I'm going to pass in a second argument called delta time, which is going to be how many milliseconds have passed since the last frame. OK, so what we're going to have to do in the update is we're going to have to update the vertical velocity and position. We're also going to have to see if check if we fell off the screen. We're also going to have to uh, update the image according to the animation. And we're also going to have to go to the next frame. So those are our steps. All right, so to update the velocity, we're going to say self.velocity, which initially is 0. That's going to be set to player.gravityforce, which is going to be our acceleration times delta time. So uh, you know, acceleration times time should give us the change in velocity. So we add that to our current velocity. And then I'm going to use that velocity to calculate our new position. So I'm going to say self.rect.y, which again is the y position of the graphic that we're currently showing. I'm going to add to that the velocity. And again, so the velocity is describing how much our position is going to have changed. This is just a vertical velocity. And uh, that position change is going to be added to our uh, y position. So that's why I'm saying plus equals. OK, uh, then we'll just check to see if we fall off the screen. Now remember that the axis, the y axis, goes positive down. So the bottom of the screen is actually display height. OK, so we've got to make sure that we're past display height. So I'll say self.rec.y. If it's greater than self.game.display height, Then that means we're off the screen. So I'm going to set ourselves to dead. Which, if the uh, the game class calls this is dead function, will return true. OK, so to update our image, we're going to set self.image equal to self.frames at self.framenum. OK, with, you know, consider we may have a different frame num. Uh, that'll show the current frame of the animation. So go to the next frame is actually going to update the frame now. Normally what I do here is something like self.framenum plus equals 1. But the problem is eventually we'll run out of frames to display. So there are only 5 frames. 0 through 4 are the proper indices. When we get to 5, it's going to generate an error when I try to actually assign the, the image to frames at position 5. Um, so really what I want to do is use the Majulo operator uh, to wrap around. When I get to 5, I want to go back to uh, 0. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to set this equal to self.framenum plus 1, which does the same thing as what I just showed you. But then I'm going to say, um, 
the remainder of that when divided by the number of frames, which I could hard code the five, but I think it's a little nicer if I say the length of self.frames. That way if I add more frames, I create a different animation later on. Uh, this should still work. All right, so now we've got ourselves a player. So let's go to the game class and implement it so that we can see the player in action. So right here. Uh, so we have this to do create the player. Let's just get rid of the to do and write in the code. So I'm going to say self dot player is equal to player dot player, and we're going to pass the game. So if you remember, the player takes the uh, the player constructor takes self, which all methods take, but it also takes a game. So you can see here it's suggesting I need to pass a game to this because that's the name of the variable. And we are the game. This object right here is the game. Floppy Bird. Floppy Bird game is going to be the class that is represents our game. Okay, so there we go. We've created a player. We've passed in the game. So here we're also going to need to self dot uh, all sprites list dot add uh, self dot player. So that'll make sure that we're added to the sprites list. So we're now being drawn. Uh, in the reset function, we can reset the player because we created a function for that. So we can say uh, self.player.reset. That's the uh, function right here that we created earlier. Okay, we still need to reset the obstacles, but we'll do that later. Okay, and then uh, down here, um, when we call all sprites list.draw, that will draw our player. So we don't have to do anything to draw the player but we are not updating the player. So let's do that next. So I'm going to say self.player.update. And update takes two arguments, self, which we don't need to pass because we're saying self.player.update. So self.player will be the self value. But we do need to pass delta time. That's why I figured it out right here. Yeah, let's actually put delta time in there. And now we can check to see if the player has died. The player kind of does that for themselves. So, so down here it says, hey, check to see if you actually fell off the screen. If so, set your dead parameter. So we don't really need to do anything here. We can really just say if self.player.is dead. That's why I created this function. And if we are dead, um, then we're going to end the game. So in this case, all I need to do to do that is say game over. This is this uh, here where we check if it collides with the obstacle is going to be pretty similar. We're going to have an if statement and then we're going to set game over to true. Okay, I don't think there's anything else that we need to do at the moment. Oh, there's one thing actually I forgot to do uh, last time. Is after we did all of the drawing, I forgot to actually show what we've drawn. So first I need to say self.display.update. Uh, I explained this last time, but just a quick reminder because it's an important point. All the drawing that we're doing is to an invisible uh, screen in the background. Uh, consider it like a, uh, like if you've heard of double buffering, this is a, a back buffer. It's a buffer that's not currently being shown. Uh, Self.display.update basically flips around the buffers and uh, it shows the one that we've been drawing to uh, is going to be visible right now. Okay, so let's actually give this a quick try. And uh, whoops, we made a mistake here. It says floppy bat game integer argument expected got float. Okay, so I'm passing here in this width and height to the scale. Uh, let's just take a quick look here. And yes, of course, I did forget to do that. So where we're, um, we're calculating the width and height here, uh, because I'm multiplying by 0 0.25, I'm going to get a floating point value. So this needs to be an integer. I'm going to cast these both to int, which is basically just going to throw away any fraction. I'm talking about a fraction of a pixel anyway, so it should be OK. Here we go. Okay, and uh, this one's saying uh, object has no attribute update. Let's see here. That's on line 88. Self.display.update. It's not 
it's supposed to be self dot display. Sorry about that. It's supposed to be pi game dot display. This is like part of the pi game sub library, and the function is a built in function. It's not part of our display object. Okay, um, so anyway, we just died. Uh, so hold on, I'll see if I can drag this over there quickly. <laughs> nope. Uh, doesn't seem to want to allow that window to open up over there. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, you can see that we're we are falling, admittedly, and that's kind of unfortunate. And that's mainly because up here. Uh, we didn't make the bird flap, so let's actually do that next. So we'll say self.player.flap. That's the function that we created before, which just increases our, our vertical velocity. There we go. So now we have a game that's very, very boring and very easy. All you gotta do is keep pushing spacebar and you don't die. So we're going to need some obstacles, obviously. So let's move on to that next. OK, actually, I meant to show you something. So in this case, uh, normally what you'd do for a sprite is you'd have one image and one rectangle. But you can see what the rectangle would look like for this image. We don't want that to be the rectangle. So rather than use the built-in rectangle uh, that's, that Pygame will provide for us, we're going to define our own rectangle that's going to be like right here roughly and right here roughly and we're going to use those two to check for collisions. Okay, so let's do that here. Okay, so this is also going to load a graphic, so we're going to need to import OS and sys for the same reason we did last time and pygame. And we're also going to randomize the position of these obstacles, so I'm going to import the random package. I'm going to create a class called obstacle, which is also going to be a sprite, just like before. Okay, so we have quite a few constants to define for this obstacle because of that whole uh, creating our own rectangle thing. Uh, depending on the position of the obstacle, the, the obstacle can actually be positioned within a certain range up and down, and also it can be positioned in a different position x uh, in the x position as well. That way there'll be some variation, which makes the game a little bit more challenging. Um, and so we're always going to be defining uh, this these rectangles in terms of the offset from the corner of the image. So let's define a couple things. So first let's just focus on the top rectangle. Uh, so maybe I'll actually keep this open. So we want to make a rectangle over here. So we're going to have to figure out how far over we need to move, how far down we need to move, and how far to the other side. Uh, so we're going to create three variables for that. So we're going to say top obstacle, left offset, and I'll set that to 50. I've already kind of pre-figured out some values that look OK. Still not perfect, though. I think that this could use some tweaking. Uh, and we'll set the width to be 140 pixels. That's going to be the width of the rectangle itself. And and the height of the rectangle is going to be set to 145. That's from the top to the, the end point where the rock stops. And it's the corridor where we can navigate between and begins. All right, so that's all we need for the top because we can actually assume that the, the rectangle is going to start at the very top of the screen. And for the bottom rectangle, we're going to need some constants as well. So it's going to need a left offset. It isn't necessarily the same left offset uh, for the top and the bottom, although they might be pretty close to each other. Uh, so we'll set the left offset to be 65. And it's actually so the top offset is going to be where it begins as we scroll down. So we're going to set this to 370. width and height. So the width of the rectangle is going to be exactly the same as the width of the other one above, 140. And we'll also set the height is going to be 125. This time it's going to be a, a slightly smaller rectangle. All right, now because we're going to be randomly choosing a position in the y and x uh, and y and x axes, uh, we're going to also have some ranges. I'm going to define those as constants as well. So first of all, the x value is going to range 
uh, between a minimum and a maximum value. So let's define the minimum value as zero. And the maximum value is going to be 200. Now we're actually going to position them right off the screen. But whether we position them immediately off the screen, like one pixel to the right of the screen, or zero pixels to the right of the screen, um, that will be zero, and it might be up to 200 pixels off the screen. This will add a little bit of variation in how quickly they come at us. Uh, and similarly, we're also going to have a range for the Y offset, which is going to be the, the uh, amount of displacement from the top of the screen. And I may actually want this to be to appear off the screen, so this is going to range from negative 128 all the way to zero. So negative 128 will actually make it so that only part of this rock is visible because it's slid up a little bit, and all of this rock is visible. And zero would mean that all of this rock is visible and only part of this one is visible because it's slid uh, it's slid up. Oh, sorry, it's slid down. All right, so those are those constants, and we also finally need some positions for the obstacles in the first place. Now we could randomly choose, but it's kind of boring when the game begins and there are no obstacles on the screen, you're just kind of flying around. Um, so the way that I did it is I gave each of the obstacles that we're going to have an initial position, which is just hard-coded, and then when they scroll off the screen, I, re I reposition them in a random spot. So I created a obstacle one initial pause and we'll set that to 200 so this one actually will appear on the screen and then the other two are going to be off the screen uh, but at kind of uh, consistent intervals for the beginning so the second obstacle and the third obstacle are going to be at 500 and 800 which are going to be off the screen there's only going to be three obstacles in total because there's really need any more than that. Every time the obstacle scrolls off the screen, we respawn it uh, to the right, so we have this continuous flow. Uh, the obstacles are going to scroll, and the actual only thing that scrolls in this game are the obstacles. So I'll actually put the scrolling behavior here. So I'm just going to set that to negative two, and uh, it's negative, of course, because we're going to want to go in the x negative direction. Alright, so this is a class. Let's put in some comments. in the uh, game object again. I think we're going to do this for all of the sprites. Uh, and remember that the first thing that we always do is we're going to call the uh, constructor of the parent, uh, which is the sprite class. Let's store the game for later, an instance variable. And let's set our image. So we're actually just going to load the image. There's no multiple animations for the obstacle, so we'll literally just load it. I'll say pygame.image.load. We'll use the os.path.join function, and that's going to be sys.path0, which is the path to this file, and then added to that, it's going to be assets slash obstacle.png. Then we're going to define the rectangle, uh, which is just going to be. The rectangle from the image, which is going to set the width and the height, and x and y will be set to zero, but we'll override. So what we're going to do is I am going to, well, we actually have two possibilities. Um, we're going to want to either actually give this obstacle an x position, like we're going to want to do when we first start the game, or we might want it to just choose its own position randomly. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass an optional parameter to this function here called x offset, and I'm going to give it an initial value, uh, sorry, a default value of negative one. So if it's set to negative one, that means that I want to generate the x position randomly, and if it's anything other than negative one, well, really, it's going to be a positive number because um, these positions here are positive numbers. Then in that case, uh, I would expect. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, let me take a drink. Uh, 
Anyway, so if, if a positive value is put in, then I won't randomly choose the x position. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is uh, I would have something like if the x offset is greater than, maybe even greater than or equal to zero, then I'll actually just say self.rect.x equals x offset. That's pretty easy. And then normally I do something like, well, if not, then I'll set the position to be random. But the only problem with that is I do want the y position to be random regardless. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a private function to randomize the position, both the x and the y. And then if I specify an x offset, then I'll just uh, overwrite the x offset that we randomly generated. That might not be the most efficient thing, but anyway. So I'm going to create a function called randomize position, and uh, we'll define that momentarily. Okay. So next is our randomize position function, and all this is going to do is figure out an x position and a y position, and we're just going to use the randint function, which specifies a minimum and maximum value, and it chooses an integer value somewhere in that range. So I'm just going to say self.rect.x is equal to random.randint. And I'm going to do this on like this style because it's going to be a pretty long argument. And we're just going to take the display width. So we're going to say self.game.displayWidth. And because I want these positions to be off the screen, so I have to be more than display width for that to happen. And I'm going to add to that the R constant that we had, which was the, the min, min obstacle x offset. And similarly, we are going to go all the way to max obstacle x offset. OK, and the same thing is true for the y. So let's just kind of duplicate this code for right now. So the y is going to be between two values as well. Uh, we do not want it off the screen, however. We want it on the screen. So let's get rid of this display width. And we're just going to change this to min obstacle y offset and max op obstacle y offset. OK, so that's all randomized position is going to do is set the x and the y position. I'm going to also define a function so that we can change the x offset ourselves. And this is only going to be used um, inside our reset function. So uh, in the game, where when we want to reset, uh, I may want to reset the positions of all three obstacles to be those default values, the 200, 500, and 800 values that we set. So this is all only going to say self dot rect dot x equals that f x offset value that got passed in. Okay. So the next thing is we're going to have to figure out about the collisions. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to define a function that's going to generate the two. Keep closing this. Uh, the two rectangles that we're going to use for collision. Now Pygame can check to see if two rectangles overlap. So our player already has a rectangle. We defined it up here. And our obstacle, it does also have a rectangle, but it's a rectangle that represents this entire space, which is quite wrong. I know our bat is also too big. We have a lot of empty space down here, but uh, we're going to ignore that for this uh, particular game. We will actually notice that our bat seems to crash into the rectangle down at the bottom, even when it's not. Um, we could fix that using a pretty similar approach. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a function to get the collision rectangles. So I'm going to have a function called get collision rects, which is going to return two rectangles as a tuple. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a top rect, which is going to be equal to pygame.rect rectangle. And there are four things in a rectangle, which is the x position, the y position, the width, and the height. And so I'm just going to use our constants for this. Now the x position is going to be the actual position of our uh, our image with an offset, because the image is going to actually show 
uh, all the way over here. And so I don't want the rectangle to start here. I want the rectangle to start somewhere over here so there's not this big gigantic corner that we can bang into that seems to be an invisible obstacle. So I'm going to say self.rect plus obstacle dot, uh, we'll call it top obstacle left offset. And self.rect.y is going to be uh, just self.rect.y because that's going to be the very top of the obstacle up here, which is correct. And then we're going to say self, uh, sorry, whoops, this is supposed to be the width. And so we're going to do obstacle dot top obstacle width. And the height is going to be the top obstacle height. OK, so there is our top rect. Um, our bottom rect is going to be pretty similar, so let's just duplicate it and save us a little typing. Okay, so for this one, uh, our rect x position is going to be the bottom left offset. And uh, our y is not going to be just y. It also has an offset because the bottom rectangle actually begins partway down. So we're going to have bottom top offset. And then same down here is we're just going to, oops, did I say top? Uh, yeah, there we go. Bottom obstacle top offset, which is a little confusing, I guess. And this is going to be the bottom obstacle width. And this one's going to be the bottom obstacle height. So finally, at the end of this function, we just return the top rect and the bottom rect as a tuple. And we're going to use that function inside another function called does collide. Again, I want to provide as simple an interface as we can to the game class so it doesn't have to worry about these details. And I think obstacle collisions make sense to put that in the obstacle class. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a player rectangle here, and I'm going to determine if it collides, that's going to be very easy to do because I just made a function that determines two rectangles and there's a built-in function to check to see if two rectangles collide. So I'm just going to say, uh, we'll call this um, top and bottom is equal to self.getCollisionRects. And then we're just going to say uh, return um, top.CollisionRects, CollideRect rather, uh, with player rect or bottom collide rect, player rect. So that function is going to see, okay, does the player rect collide with the top rectangle, or does it collide with the bottom? If either one of those is true, this is going to return true. If both of them are false, this is does collide, it's going to return false. So there we go, that's pretty good. Uh, we're also going to need an update function. Remember, uh, all of our sprites are going to need an update function. So I'm going to have an update function. This one doesn't need a delta time uh, argument because uh, the, the obstacle is just going to slide over uh, on its own uh, at a, any particular rate. It doesn't really matter how much time has passed. And so we're going to say time uh, self.rec.x uh, plus equals obstacle.mapsflow speed. So remember that's a negative value. So I'm going to basically be sliding over the x value. And uh, I also have to have some behavior where I check to see if the obstacle is off the screen. Because if so, I want to re-randomize its position. So I just, I'm going to say if self.rec.x is less than zero. This won't quite work because the x position is actually the left side of the image. So the image is still visible on the screen when it gets to zero. Uh, so really what I want to do is I want to say if the x position plus the width Us using self.rect.width. If that is less than zero, then it's off the screen. So I'll just call self.randomize position. Just going to regenerate another x and y value again using the randomized uh, function that we created up here. Okay, so now we've got ourselves an obstacle. Let's add it to the game. So going up here, creating some obstacles. Uh, what we're going to do is create three obstacles. Uh, let's put a blank line here. Okay. 
So our obstacles are just going to be stored in a list to make things nice and easy. Um, so then what I'll do is I will uh, instantiate an obstacle, passing in myself as the game object and the x offset. Remember the x offset is going to be a constant. And so Obstacle one initial pause. Let's actually just copy and paste it. Okay. Okay, I forgot to you have to prefix it here. Um, again we could use the from obstacle import obstacle, uh, which would make our code a little shorter, but yeah, this is okay. All right, let's duplicate this three times to create three obstacles, and we'll just adjust the initial position to be the appropriate constant, so everything looks good there. Now I need to make sure that I add these obstacles to our sprite list, so I'm going to say uh, for obstacle, obstacles, self obstacles I mean, self .all sprites list add obstacle. And that's kind of a long-winded way of doing it. Uh, there actually is a, a nice way of doing this. You can say all sprites list add uh, self dot obstacles, and it'll add all of the obstacles in that list to our sprites list, which I think is pretty nice. Okay, um, in the reset function, we had to reset all the obstacles, and so what that means is repositioning the obstacles at their default positions. So I'll just kind of hard code this. So say self dot obstacles at position zero, and we created a function for that. If you remember, called set off x offset. And we're just going to set that to obstacle dot obstacle dot obstacle one initial pause, and we'll do that three times for each of three obstacles. There we go. Now our reset function should work uh, when we go to play the game again. And because we added all of the obstacles to the sprite list, when we draw the obstacles down here, uh, when we draw the sprites rather, the obstacles will be drawn as well. All right, but we have a couple more things to do, which is here update the obstacles, which is quite easy to do. All I need to do is call the update function on each obstacle. So I'm going to say for obstacle in self dot obstacles obstacle dot update. So that'll actually cause it to shift over. And then lastly, I have to check to see if the player has collided with an object. So in order to do that. I need to loop over all of the obstacles again. And I'm just going to say if, actually, yes, if obstacle dot does collide, that was the function that we worked on last, uh, which is, oh, no, sorry, not, not last. Does collide, we're going to pass to it the player rectangle. Uh, I'm going to say does collide self.player.rect. Then we'll just set the game over to true so that it starts the game again. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think that is all for right now. So let's actually run this. Okay. Uh, oh, it just. Uh, Died. Oh, I forgot because we forgot something in our game. Uh, in our loop here, we're not returning anything. And so in flappybat.py, we're saying while flappybat.play, the idea was that this function should return true or false if the user wants to play again. We're not going to ask them, we're just going to automatically have them play again unless they click the X button. So in our game, if they type user quit, then I don't want to, uh, I don't want to play again. So let's just make sure I have the right indentation here. I want to indent here. Um, uh, here, I'm just going to return not user quit. So 
that's just going to say, well, if user quit is true, I want to return false because that means that they don't want to play again. So I'll put that in there. And now if we run it again, well, you'll probably miss the first game. Um, so I just died, but then it automatically started the game again. Let's die by crashing into an obstacle. You can see that. Anyway, so right now we're not drawing the uh, the debug rectangles, so it can be we might get some situations where it looks like we didn't crash. Anyway, okay, so it looks good. But if we click the X, notice it doesn't play another game. Okay, so the only uh, two things that we need to do are to draw the collision rectangles, uh, which is uh, pretty easy to do uh, because we have that function uh, get uh, get collision rects. Um, so we're gonna use that. So if self.debug is set, so in other words, debug mode is enabled, then I want to go through every single obstacle. And I want to get the two rectangles. So let's say top comma bottom equals obstacle oops, dot get collision rects. And then what I'm going to do is draw them on the screen. I'm going to say pygame.draw.rect, which draws a rectangle. I'm going to pass in the display object, which is what I want to draw to. And we're going to draw it in yellow, so we'll use that color. And I'm going to draw the top rectangle. And we'll also draw the bottom rectangle the same way. Let's see what that looks like. Self.debug is set to true because I just messed this up somehow. Um, let's actually do a little debug here. I'm sure, I forgot something silly. But we'll just print this out. This will print every frame, so it's going to print a lot. But let's see. Okay, so it is saying that it is in debug mode. Okay, um, and then the list of obstacles. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Oh, actually, I was wrong. I thought that maybe I didn't store this in an instance variable, but no, actually, I did do that. Uh, clearly, I did something else wrong. that there is indeed a sprite, so it seems to be finding the sprite. It's just not drawing them. Oh, oh, <laughs> the reason is that I did this drawing, but then I did the flip of the screen after, so definitely can't do that. Oops, that's silly. All right, let's get rid of this print. Okay, there we go. This is really gross looking. But it's, it's really handy for our testing to see why. And we might also want to draw a rectangle around our bird, uh, our bat, rather. So I'm going to hit D. You can see that it toggles it off. So we can play in regular mode. Anyway. So if we, if we were to draw a rectangle around our bat, all of these collisions would make sense. Our bat is bigger than it needs to be. But I think the collision boxes for the obstacle are pretty good. OK, the only thing that we need to do now is finally create a scoreboard. So we have something like a game, and we are kind of displaying the score up at the top, uh, but I would really like down here to display the score on the scoreboard. So let's actually do that. So first let's create a scoreboard in our scoreboard class. So there's no graphic here, so we just need to import iGame. It's just going to use text. But I am going to make it a sprite. Seems a little strange because we don't actually have a graphic. 
uh, but I'm just going to render the text, and that text will be our image, which I think is pretty easy. Um, let's create two constants, which are the positions. So let's make the x and y position. Most of this is exactly the same, so I won't bother to rehash the things that we've talked about. Okay, so some of the other things that we're going to need uh, for this are our high score. So we're going to have uh, the highest score is going to be initially set to zero, and the current score is also going to initially be set to zero. Uh, let's make them floats on purpose, I guess. Um, and then we're going to also define a font, uh, and that's going to be our font that's in our assets folder, Jelly Bowl. I'm just going to load that. And we'll make it size 18. Okay, um, then I'm also going to define a function called update image, which is going to take the current score and the high score and actually draw them on the screen. Uh, I'll do this in a function because doing it inside the, the constructor here is only going to happen once. I'm going to call it update image, and it's going to be a private function. Okay, so that's actually pretty easy because the the Python uh, Pygame actually has a function where you can render the graphic, uh, render uh, text to an image. So I'm just going to say self.image is equal to self.font render. And that function is going to take a few parameters. The first parameter is going to be the string. So we're going to actually use an f string for that. And the next thing we're going to do is true. I can't actually remember. Oh, anti-aliasing. So we'll turn on anti-aliasing so it looks nice and smooth. Um, and then we're going to have the color. So we're going to have self.game.white, which is going to be white text, and self.game.black on a black background, which I think will look cool. Okay. Uh, anytime that uh, hint can go away, that'd be great. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is I'm going to have something like best 0.0, .0 current, something like 0.0, .0 and then I want an S at the end as well. So that's basically what I want, uh, but I want to use the variables. So what I'm going to do here is use the curly brackets, and I'm going to say self dot high score, and then over here, same thing. I'm going to say self dot current score. But again, I want to format them so that they have two decimal places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, colon 0.2f. So the 0 0.2 will make sure that it always displays a 0 to the left of the decimal place. The 2 means two decimal places, and the f just means a floating point value. We'll do that for both. So that's great. Um, the next thing we need to do is set the rect of the sprite, uh, which again is just going to be self.image.getRect set the width and the height, but then I'm going to position the x to be the scoreboard dot score x offset, and the y will be set similarly to the score y offset. Uh, so that's basically it. So just like any other sprite, we need to set the image and the rect. Okay, so we're also going to have another function called update score, which is going to allow us to pass in a new score. So it's going to pass in a score. We'll call it new score. And then if new score is also a new high score, we're going to update both variables. So I'm going to set the current score equal to new score. And I'm going to check to see if new score is greater than the high score. If it is, set the high score. 
And then at the end, now that these values are new, we're going to call the update image function that we just wrote. So there we go. Now this doesn't have a, a traditional update, but this is going to be kind of its update. So we're going to call that inside our game loop. All right, going back to the game then, I have to instantiate our scoreboard. So let's go back up to the top here. So create the scoreboard. the game object as an argument to that constructor. So that creates the scoreboard. I'm also going to add it to the list of sprites. Okay, and I don't need this to do anymore. Now notice the order here. I put the scoreboard last so that the scoreboard will be drawn on top. Okay, um, so then the next thing to do is to actually update the score. Um, it's automatically going to be drawn because I just added it to the all sprites list and it's in the proper order so everything looks good. So I think the only thing we need to do is right here where we display the score on the scoreboard instead of just adding it to the caption. So what I'm going to do is call self.scoreboard.updateScore and the score is going to be our time pass variable. In this case our score is just going to be how long we've, we've lived. All right, uh, so anyway, let's, let's actually take a quick look here. Okay. So anyway, let's just get it up to like 10 seconds or so, and then we'll see. Okay, let's die on purpose here. Okay, and um, you can see that it saves the best score until you surpass it. So let's surpass it just to double check that that works. So far this game has been too easy. That was the first time it actually had a challenging jump. Anyway, so anyway, now admittedly there's no uh, you know persistence in the high score and there's a lot of things that obviously are problematic. The game doesn't get any harder over time and there are issues with the with the collision, but we, we know how to solve those. Those are all pretty easy things to solve as, and it gave us a lot of practice with uh, classes and such, so it's a uh, it's a great opportunity, great practice, uh, and we'll keep on making more games in the future. So, hope everybody had a good time. Check out the uh, the GitHub repository if you run into any difficulties, so they can see my version, which will be posted along with this video. All right, everybody, have a great day.